مساء الخير مشاهدينا بيسعدني وبيشرفني أن أكون معكم وإليكم على هذه المنصة اللي بدأت فيها مسيرتي منذ حوالي 17 سنة إنجازات وصعوبات وذكريات بتخليني كمل هذه المهنة بشغف اليوم أنا ممتنة لكل شيء وبهديكم نجاحي ومثابرتي وحبي وبتمنى أن أكون عند حسن ظنكم دائماً نبدأ موسم 2023 الحافل من المملكة العربية السعودية اللي هي اليوم قوة رائدة في جذب المعارض الرئيسية على مستوى العالم بالشراكة مع وزارة الثقافة والمتحف الوطني للمملكة العربية السعودية بالرياض افتتحت فانكليف أن أربلز أبوابة لتجربة غامرة وشاملة وتاريخية وشاعرية السعي المستمر لنقل المعرفة والحرفية بيجعل الدار قوة عالمية للتغيير الاجتماعي وداعية للتواصل بين الثقافات للغوص في هذه التجربة والتطرق إلى موضوع هذا النمو السريع في المنطقة نترك الحديث إلى الرئيس التنفيذي What's very striking today in Saudi Arabia is the speed at which the vision and the projects are actually coming to life. Why Saudi Arabia? Why was it such a particularly important strategic move for an exhibition of this kind? Well, you know, we, we've been involved and you followed our activities for many years now um, in really the promotion and the transmission of jewelry from the cultural and uh, patrimony point of view. Uh, we really wanted to bring that uh, component of our uh, philosophy, in a way, mm -hmm. to, uh, to this market and to this city. So it was a combination of a lot of you know, um, opportunities and, and great timing and really a fantastic dialogue with the team of the museum. Looking at the vision of 2030, how does that align with the mission of Bank of Art today? As part of this vision for the country, there is a great deal of attention to culture and education and um, jewelry and decorative arts, we feel are a very, very good vehicle in a way for a lot of audiences. And there is in this country, as in the rest of the region, such uh, an interest, an attention and a tradition for jewelry and decorative arts so that we knew from the very beginning that the subject was of interest. Mm -hmm. Then the whole process, which was very exciting, was really about how to bring the subject in the best possible condition. And here it's how to curate an exhibition, how to make the choices of pieces, how to uh, bring a whole set of educational programs around the exhibition, how to design the exhibition so that it's not uh, an exhibition for experts or specialists, but it's really... Uh, it's for everyone. Yes, it's for everyone and it's an experience. So it's, it's about the jewelry, obviously, it's about the objects and the pieces on display. But uh, as you've seen, uh, it's really also uh, an immersive experience. Totally, and totally. This is really where the, the scenography and the design were extremely important. When I asked you in the press conference about the importance of this cross-cultural dialogue, I did not quite feel it until I was actually in the museum, when I saw the pieces, how they were curated, what, in your opinion, were the main kind of influences uh, within these particular chapters that we saw today in this exhibition? There are so many. I think that the, the title, in a way, you know, Time, Nature and Love is kind Time, of a nature summary. And love. Yes. A uh, beautiful title, I think, but uh, it's a summary of these influences. To your point, the idea is to keep it light so that it's mm -hmm. not a celebration of the past mm -hmm. uh, only, and it's not uh, something that talks only about you know, transmission and generations, and uh, talks about you know, today, about the future. And there is, I hope, uh, at least there was in the way we conceived the exhibition, uh, a playfulness uh, and sometimes uh, a sense of humor. Uh, so that's important for us. You 
hope that this exhibition would be to focus more uh, about the role of jewelry as a as a cultural category of art rather than focus on you know the retail side or the marketing or selling uh, the jewelry and this exhibition is dedicated to that to transmitting knowledge uh, uh, and celebrating education and your role as a brand in this industry. Tell us a little bit more about that. I think it's really true for a lot of our initiatives. Yeah. We, we believe and I strongly believe for a long time and we discussed that in the past that yeah. um, jewelry is a fantastic artistic category and that aspect has sometimes been forgotten or it deserves to be better known. Mm. Uh, of course there is a commercial activity, of course there are brands, there are you know retail spaces, distribution networks and sales, uh, but at the end of the day it's really about you know art and craftsmanship and tradition mm. and an exhibition like this one is an opportunity to show these pieces in a way that's completely disconnected from their financial value, their, nothing is for sale in the exhibition. You have in the same windows pieces that can be of tremendous value uh, and pieces that can be uh, much more affordable. And it's not, it's not the point. The point is to show how jewelry translates emotions, inspirations. لطالما أسعدني رؤية سيدات ناجحات ومتعلقات في حديثهن إليكم المزيد حول المعرض في هذا اللقاء an exhibition of this standard and versatility with all those messages in Saudi Arabia for the first time, it's something to be celebrated to say the least. My first obvious question would be, how did this collaboration with Maison Vaclif and Arpels start uh, on this particular project? Thank you so much for this question, because it's the very first time that someone asked me about the process of research that, for my perspective, is crucial for the success of an exhibition. I spent three years into the archives of the Maison looking for an inspiration because what was very clear to me was that I was not going to curate a very conventional exhibition. This was very clear for me at the very beginning, but I didn't know how to interpret such a glorious history of the Maison. I discovered some almost unknown pieces, and finding innovation in an eye jewelry maison is not easy at all, because innovation is not requested to eye jewelry. But during these three years in the archive, I realized that Van Cleef and Arpels has been one of the most innovative jewelry mm -hmm. brand of the century. How do you identify over a century and a half of history? How do you pinpoint what were the key moments or key moments of innovations that changed a particular status quo at that time and bring it into 2023? It must be very It, it has been difficult. difficult. <laughs> to it say was, the least. yes, but I was supported by the idea of time. I'm obsessed by time. During the research process, I was looking for the objects, important, less important, uh, daily objects, with the ability to represent its time. My efforts were in trying to describe always this tension of the Maison between timeless and fashion, between innovation and investment. Mm -hmm. Never forget that a piece of jewelry is also an investment. Mm -hmm. So, very different context and very different fields. The 
fact that I was in the exhibition today, I felt the pieces themselves told a thousand stories, but the themes were very strong as well. Yeah. Love, yeah. nature, time. Yeah. How did you go about navigating these three themes in such a modern way? At the very beginning, I always start all the exhibitions, all the books from the titles. I love words. Time, Nature and Love came up very soon because for me, time, nature and love are the most important values in life. Not just as a so curator, true. but yeah. as a person. Time was the most difficult part. How can we interpret time? One of my favorite books is The Six Memos for the Next Millennium by Italo Calvino. Mm. And in this book, Calvino, uh, these were supposed to be uh, some lectures for the Harvard University in 1985, in which Calvino, as one of the world's most important writers, was requested to have a vision on the new millennium mm -hmm. and on its values. So, Calvino identified five values for the next millennium. And I realized that these five values are the main values of our time mm -hmm. and are also perfectly matching with the Maison. There's no doubt that we have a very strong uh, culture and heritage, but we are also, uh, when we say we, as in uh, the GCC, particularly the, yeah. uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, yeah. you have a young population. Yes. The market is emerging quite rapidly at a pace that is unheard uh, yeah. of. Did you take that into consideration while you were preparing for this exhibition that most of these young talents that are hungry for arts are going to be among the visitors and they will be learning I am from yes, this experience? Uh, absolutely. Uh, my first objective are young people and new generation. I am a scholar, I am a professor. I have devoted my whole life to young people. My hope and my wish is that young people looking at this jewelry, looking at this exhibition, can understand that jewelry is not just exclusivity, but can be many different things, contents Actually, and Actually, you made the experience very much inclusive. Yes. And this is yeah. really amazing. Yes. Uh, it's definitely one of the best experiences I've had in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Yeah.